Welcome grade 10. Today we play with the bad boy, tan. Sine and cosine have similar responses to the changes in variables. Have you ever wondered how the trigonometric tan function will change if we make changes to the a and q values of the function? Well, that's the topic of today's lesson. So let's join Keke, who will show us what will happen and explain why. Let's start by changing the a value in the parent tan graph and keeping q equal to zero. We want to choose a few values for a and then see how each of them will change the parent graph. Then we can use these examples to see if we can generalize about the effect of a on the graph. It's useful to test an a value greater than 1 and another a value that is a fraction between 0 and 1. Then we also need to test negative a values. Let's start with a equal to 3. How do you expect the parent tan graph to change if a is 3? Let's work it out. The equation of the new graph will be y equals 3 tan x. 3 tan x means 3 multiplied by the whole function tan x. So the y value of every point on the parent graph is multiplied by 3. Here's the table of values that we use to plot the parent graph y equals tan x. Remember that the angle theta was plotted on the x-axis, so the theta values are the x values. The tan theta values are the y values. Let's look at some of the points from the table. For each of these points, we can multiply their y value by 3 to get the new y values. I will add a column to the table to record the new y values. So, 3 times 0 here is still 0. 3 times 1 becomes 3. Here y is undefined. That will still be undefined. Then we'll get negative 3 here Again, 0 here, then 3 for this one. This one is undefined, so it stays undefined here. Then we'll get negative 3 here, and our last one will be 0. This should give us enough points to plot the new graph. We'll plot it on the same system of axes as the parent graph, so that we can compare it to the parent graph. Here's our parent graph. So, the point 0 degrees, 0 stays the same. 45 degrees and 3 is here. Then at 90 degrees, we'll have the asymptote again because the y is undefined here. Next, we have 135 degrees, negative 3 here. Then 180 degrees, 0. 225 degrees, 3. At 270 degrees, we have another asymptote. Then 315 degrees, negative 3, here. And then our last point at 360 degrees and 0. Now we can join these points with smooth curves and see what the graph looks like. Is this what you expected? Increasing the A value from 1 to 3 cause the parent graph to stretch vertically and move away from the axis. The coordinates of every point on the graph have changed by a factor of 3, and so the graph has been stretched away from the x-axis by a factor of 3. We can say that an A value greater than 1 stretches the graph vertically up and down from the x-axis. Now, think about this. Did changing the A value in the tan graph have the same effect as it did in the sine graph and the cos graph. What was the effect? Let's look at them again. Changing the A value does have the same effect on the tan parent graph as it had on the sine graph and the cosine graph. It stretches the graph away from the x-axis. What do you think will happen to the parent graph if we choose an a value that is less than 1? Let's choose a equal to a half, 
So we are multiplying all the y values on the graph by half. If we compare the points on the new graph with the points on the parent graph, they will be half the distance away from the x-axis. If we join them, we get the graph of y equals a half tan x. It's as if the graph is being pulled towards the x-axis. So, increasing the a value causes the graph to stretch away from the x-axis, while decreasing the a value causes the graph to pull towards the x-axis. So far, we've only looked at a values that are greater than zero for the tan graph. What effect do you think negative a values will have on the graph? Let's start with the graph of y equal to negative tan x. What do you think this graph will look like? Let's find out. We can use the table to find a few values for negative tan x. This equation is the same as that of the parent graph. It just has a negative in front. This means that all the y values should be the same, but the signs will be different. So these values will remain undefined at 90 degrees and at 270 degrees. The zeros will remain zeros. The negative ones will become positive ones. And the positive ones will become negative ones. Now, let's plot these points to see what the graph will look like. We can plot 0 degrees and 0 here, 45 degrees negative 1, 135 degrees and 1 here, 180 degrees and 0, then 225 degrees negative 1. 315 degrees 1 and lastly 360 degrees and 0. To show where y is undefined we can place asymptotes at 90 degrees and at 270 degrees. The points plotted so far don't really give us a clear picture of what the whole graph will look like. If we plot more points in between them we'll see that the points are smooth curved lines. We can join them up so this is the graph for y equal to negative 10x. Now let's compare this graph with the parent graph. What has changed in the parent graph to make the new graph? Do you see that the new graph looks like the reflection of the parent graph? By changing the a value in the parent function to negative 1, the graph is reflected about the x-axis. So, for other negative a values, we can use the reflection of the parent graph to work out how the a value affects the graph. Let me show you. Look at the graph of y equals negative 3 tan x. We can form this graph by reflecting the parent graph and then stretching each point on the graph by a factor of 3. Or, we could reflect the graph of y equal to 3 tan x about the x-axis. That will also give us the graph of y equal to negative 3 tan x. Let's try another one. To find the graph of y equals negative a half tan x, we could reflect the parent graph and then stretch it by a factor of a half. That will pull it towards the x-axis. Or we could reflect the graph for y equal to a half tan x about the x-axis. You've seen how the graphs change when a is negative. What general statement can we make about the effect of a negative a value on the parent graph? The negative a value in the tan formula has the same effect on the tan graph as it had on the sine and cosine graphs. We can say that for a values less than negative 1, the graph is stretched vertically away from the x-axis. For a values between negative 1 and 0, the a value will result in the graph being pulled towards the axis. Now we also need to see how the tan graph will change if we change the q value. Have a look at these three graphs. What is the same about all three of them? They are all tan graphs, they all curve in the same way, and they have the same asymptotes here at 90 degrees and at 270 degrees. Now, can you describe what makes them different from each other? 
The blue one in the middle is the parent graph y equals 10x. It cuts the x-axis at 0 degrees and 180 degrees. And at 45 degrees, the y value is 1. At 135 degrees, the y value is negative 1. Let's compare the pink graph to the parent graph. This pink graph cuts the y-axis at 2. So when x is 0 degrees, the tan function is 2. We can say that the point zero, 0 on the parent graph has shifted up 2 units to get to 0, 2. At x equal to 45 degrees, the y value on the parent graph is 1. The y value on the pink graph is 3, so it has also shifted up by 2 units. At 135 degrees, the parent graph has y equal to negative 1, while this one's y value is 1. So this point has also shifted up by 2 units. If you check every other point on the pink graph, you'll see that if we compare it with the same x value for the parent graph, it has shifted up by 2 units. So it's as if the whole parent graph for tan has been shifted up by 2 units. If we move the parent graph up by 2 units, it will fit exactly onto the pink graph. You've seen this shift in the sine graph and the cosine graph before, so I'm sure you know what the formula of this pink graph will be. It will be y equals tan x plus 2. Now let's compare the other graph to the parent graph. The points on this graph have shifted down by one unit from the parent graph. If we move the parent graph down like this, it will fit exactly onto the red graph. So the formula for this graph will be y equals tan x minus 1. So the q value in the tan function has the same effect it has on all the other functions we have worked with so far. The parent graph is shifted up or down by q units. We have checked this for two q values while we kept the a value at 1 on the parent graph. Now let's see how the graph changes if we change the a value and the q value at the same time. If we make the a value negative 1, we're working with the reflection of the parent graph. Now if we change the q value to 3 on this graph, the graph will still shift up by 3 units, like this. However, if we change the q value to negative 2 and keep the a value at negative 1, the graph will shift 2 units down, like this. Now, you should be able to predict how the tan parent graph will change if we make the changes to its a value and its q value. Try this one. Can you sketch the graph of y equals negative 2 tan x plus 1? One way to do this is to reflect the parent graph first. That gives you the graph for y equals negative tan x. Next, you need to multiply each point by 2. In other words, you need to stretch the graph by a factor of 2. You can do this by choosing a few points on the reflected parent graph. Multiply their y values by 2 and plot the new points. That will give you this graph. Lastly, the whole graph must be shifted up by one unit. This is the graph you want. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Remember to use the correct terminology when you speak about trigonometric functions. This way, you will improve your understanding of the concepts. Also look at our trigonometric functions task video to explore questions on this topic. And for more information, go to our website www.mindset.co.za. Remember, you can teach an old dog new trig. Goodbye.